Thank you. Our opening hymn is Down at the Cross. Let us all stand for the opening hymn. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Singing glory to His name I'm singing glory to His name Glory to His name there to my heart was the blood of life, seeing glory to his name. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. We are a season of land, and today is the first Sunday of land, and the call during this land is conversion. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words. And what I have done, what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God to the yearly observance of Holy Land that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to, Moa and to Noah and his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth, God added. This is a sign I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you 
and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and true to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Remember that your compassion, O oh Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. Guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once the righteous and the sake of right unrighteousness, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he has brought to life in the spirit. In it he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who, was once, who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved with water. This prefigured baptism, which saved you now, it is not to remove a removal of dirt from the body, but an approval to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of endless glory One does not live on bread alone But on every word That comes forth from the mouth of God Praise to you, Lord Jesus The Lord be with you. And with your Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out in the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild bees, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is a time of fulfillment. 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I'm sure you remember the last verse in today's gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. That's one of the formula mentioned last as Wednesday. Turn away from sin and believe in the gospel or remember your dust and unto dust you shall return. So we are in the season of Lent, 40 days of time to look deeply where we are in terms of our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Oftentimes, we forget about it. That's why the church reminds us about our Christian faith our Christian life. Where are we in terms of our relationship with our Lord? If we see how we live our lives, we give a lot of attention only to our body. We eat for our spirit and physical nourishment. Apart from that, we spend a lot of time in social media. Also, some would use cologne, lotion. So, so many attentions being focused on our physical body. But we forget that we have also the divine life, which is being neglected often. So during this time of Lent, we are called to focus on our spiritual life. The Lord is always asking us, where are you? Remember the fall of our first parents, Adam and Eve, when they were tempted and they succumbed to the temptation? when they ate the forbidden fruit, they, their eyes were open and they were hiding themselves. They were distancing themselves with God. That's why when God came and looked for them, a question was asked, where are you? That was not just a physical distance, but the question is, where are you? In terms of your relationship with me, God was totally aware that they disobeyed his commandments. So they were now living in a distance with God. So during this land, the same question is asking us from God, where are you? So if we realize that we are living in a distance from our Lord, now is the time for us to come back again and restore that relationship with God. All of us in one way or another, we experience temptations. That's why the first Sunday of Lent, our gospel is about the temptations of our Lord Jesus. We are in cycle B, so we read the gospel of Mark. And the gospel of Mark is just only a summary of that, that Jesus was dropped to the desert and tempted by the devil. But if you go to the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Matthew, it is in detail. You remember, Jesus was so hungry because he was fasting and he was so vulnerable during the time. So he was hungry. And the devil came if you are the Son of God, you can command that stone to turn to loaves of bread. That was a temptation 
to our Lord Jesus to use his divine power. Jesus had all the power to do that, but he did not want to use that power because he was a completely human person. His purpose to go there is to be with God, the Father, experiencing all those pains of being in the desert, that physical hunger, in order for him to experience God in his life. I think that's also what we are called to do. We do fasting in order to realize that hunger for God. We will not feel that hunger for God if we will not do some discipline from ourselves like food. And during this time of Lent, we are called to fast in so many different ways. Not only in terms of food, things we have to fast to make gossips, we have to fast to commit sin. And temptation nowadays is only can be found at the tip of our fingers. With the social media, with the internet, we can commit sin by just to our fingertips. How many people are addicted to pornography nowadays? They commit sins of against chastity and many other sins we can commit through social media. So the temptations are just around the corner. If we are not strong enough, we easily get tempted and we fall into such temptations. That's why during this time of land, we have again to nourish ourselves. We have to unite ourselves to our Lord and Savior, who was tempted but did not fall into temptations. Because he was always in intimacy with our Lord Jesus. That's the very reason why we are here. We are here to nourish ourselves to his words from the scripture. We are here to nourish ourselves to the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. And during this time of land, opportunity for confessions are in churches. And the whole diocese of Columbus we have opportunity to spend time before our Lord in front of the Blessed Sacrament. That's a very powerful nourishment to our spiritual life. Even though we will not say anything, you are just there before the Blessed Sacrament, you will be nourished by God's grace and God's power. Someone put it it's just, just like you're under the heat of the sun. If you're under the heat of the sun, you will notice that after some time, your skin will turn into the effects of the sunlight. So that's what happens to us when we are before the Blessed Sacrament. Even though we will not say anything, just be there. The power and the grace of God will be upon us and will have the strength to continue a journey facing temptations. Because temptations, whether you like it or not, will always be there. It comes in many different ways. It comes in the time that you least expect. It comes even during the Mass. It comes during time of prayer. So temptations by itself is not a sin. It becomes a sin when you entertain it and act upon it. You know it's temptation, you know it's serious sin, and you still volunteer to entertain it and act upon it. That's a very serious sin. And according to the letter of Peter, the devil is just a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You have to resist him solely in faith. So, my dear brothers and sisters, 
Today, once again, through the gospel, it reminds us that we have to be strong. In order to be strong, we have always to nourish ourselves. In the name of our Lord Jesus, through the power of prayer, through the power of the Holy Sacrament, and once we wander away, God continuously to call us back. So this is a time. Land is a time for us once again to go back to the Lord. God has been so merciful. The book of Genesis, remember during the time of Noah, people, they don't care anymore about God. So during that time, God thought to destroy completely his creation. He was full of regret why he created. Creation, like people, because they don't care about him anymore. They continuously committing sins. But during that time, he was able to see that Noah and his family, they were faithful to him. So his intention to destroy completely his creation changed because God is a merciful God, always giving opportunity. So he asked Noah to build the ark. And we know the story that Noah entered the ark with instructions of all kinds of animals, pair by pair. Today we hear that the flood was over and God made a covenant to Noah not to destroy the world again through the water of the flood. So that's a sign that God gives us every opportunity to do and start once again. So then is a time for us to start again. Because God is a merciful God. Today's second reading or letter of St. Peter, St. Peter reminds us that Jesus died for our sins. He submitted himself and obedient to the Father so that all of us will have life. And this is the time for us to come back to him once again. Don't wait for tomorrow. Because the greatest temptation is there's still tomorrow. That's the greatest temptation. We keep postponing of our conversion to God. Well, other parts of the gospel reminds us that death will come to us like a thief in the middle of the night. During this pandemic, those almost 500,000 here in the United States who died most of them, they never thought that they would die. But now they are gone. Hopefully, they were able to repent even at the last moment and ask God for forgiveness. And God is a merciful God. Never surrendered us. I have seen that. I have many experiences responding to the call to the, in the hospital for a person who was diagnosed with serious disease, stage 4 cancer. They've been away from the church for a long time, years. But even though during the last moment of our life, God is giving them opportunity to repent from their sins. Because God is a God of love, mercy, and compassion. He does not rejoice of our condemnation but he always rejoices when we repent from our sins the gospel of luke says there's always joy in heaven for one repentant sinner so during this lent i'm sure not only one will be touched by the holy spirit to be converted so there will be tremendous joy in heaven when we repent from our sins, and that person may be us.
Amen. Let's now stand for press our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, holy begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made, for us men for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, became man. For sake, who was crucified on the point of Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, the Son, who with the Father, the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin the season of Lent, we come in faith and trust before God the Father, seeking His help in our struggle with the forces of evil. We pray for the church throughout the world. May its proclamation that God's kingdom is at hand reach the hearts of those most in need of conversion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as a community that we may enter into the spirit of Lent and be generous in our efforts at prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May we make an honest effort to go into the wilderness with Jesus and see ourselves, we really are, who we really are. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are carrying the cross of sicknesses. May they unite their pain and suffering with the passion of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For all our deceased relatives and friends, especially Beverly Paschal, for which this Mass is offered, may God give them peace and eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers which we make in faith. May you continue to show us your love as we answer your call to fast and deny ourselves. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may remain in your seat during the offertory. The ushers will collect envelopes and offerings. There can be no sign of peace or touching outside the family unit. Allow persons to move out of the pew to maintain physical distancing as you exit and enter the pew. To receive communion, the usher will sanitize your hands and direct you into the aisle. Communion is received into your flat hand only. Then move to the side to place the host into your mouth Recover your mouth and nose as you return to your seat. Lord, help me to hold out. Be easy. You did. 
did not say that it would be but If it gets dark, can't you see my way You told me to put my trust in thee And now I'm asking you, Lord Help me to hold on to hold on just a little while longer, Lord, help me to hold on until my change comes. Pray my dear sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the light, the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, to Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated to the, his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of pure praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fawn of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon the vega to fall, so that it will become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took when giving thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, a breath of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread to all the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy, welcome them to light up your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may Mary to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. Thy kingdom come, so well be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, said Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe to our life. Amen. Blood of Christ, keep us served, I love Amen. Prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to seep into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually in my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separate from you. Amen. Holiness, 
is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Let us pray. Renewed now with humbly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, entirety is strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that you may learn to hunger for Christ, the true living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth through Christ our Lord. Please all be seated for the announcements. Good morning, church. Good morning. Let me get to the right page. Do we have any visitors with us this morning? Thank you for visiting with us and hope that you will return again. Thank you, to, thank you to all new and returning readers of the Catholic Times, online and in print. It's not too late to subscribe for the upcoming year for a minimum donation of $17. Sign up online at columbuscatholic.org forward slash Catholic Times under the subscription payment tab. 
You may also use the envelope provided in your February packet or simply write your name and the Catholic Times on a plain envelope. Make your check payable to the Diocese of Columbus, Catholic Times, and drop it into the collection basket. Another option is to mail your $17 check payable to Diocese of Columbus, Catholic Times, to our office at 197 East Gay Street, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. You'll find the Catholic Times very useful to keep up on all the news throughout the diocese and the Catholic Church. Virtual book discussion. With the increased focus on racism in this country, we want to initiate dialogue within the church to further understand and increase awareness among people of all backgrounds. Please join us to discuss the book, White Vigility. Why is it so hard for white people to talk about racism by Robin D'Angelo? On Saturday, March 20th, 2021, from 3 to 5 p.m. For those interested in participating in this discussion, send your email to wanahalston at yahoo.com and a Zoom link will be forwarded to you about two weeks before this discussion. <clears throat> While this format is best on a laptop or computer, you may participate by calling in by phone. Help St. Dominic participate in this diocese diocesan-wide initiative to, by completing the 10 to 15 minute online survey as soon as possible. The DMI survey will ask you to reflect on your own spiritual growth and enable you to provide feedback on your parish's effort to help you grow. All responses will be confidential and the parish will only receive information about the community as a whole. The link to complete the survey online is available on the insert in the bulletin. Paper surveys can also be downloaded from the provided link. Additional paper copies are available at the table in the front entrance of the church. To return a paper survey, place the DMI survey box in the front entrance of the church. Thank you and have a wonderful week. So this third Sunday, so at one o'clock there will be African Community Mass here with Father Jesse. So I'd like to warn you that there's a scam going on in the diocese. They're using the emails of priests or text messaging and asking you to buy an eBay card or iTunes card and scratch a number and send to that person there. So they're using the email of priests yesterday, a person from St. Dominic called it to verify that because he has received an email telling, I'm sorry, I'm in a meeting right now. Can you please do me a favor? Buy an eBay card, $400, and scratch the number sent to me because I'm going to give a gift of a person who is sick with cancer. So good that that person did not entertain. And he said, I will ask, I look for a Bible verse and send to that person for his reflection. And another priest sent me a text message that the same is happening with him. So don't entertain those emails or text messages coming from me or from the other priests in the diocese because that's a scam. It's been going on even during the time of Bishop Campbell when he was still a bishop. So until now, they're still using that to fool people. Okay, so be careful with that. And please all stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. Jesus to walk with me.